Hello, this is Pastor Sam Velez, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for our service. We hope you enjoy this message today, that it blesses your life and your families. We love you. Unshakable kingdom. We've been talking about what it is to have the kingdom of God in our life and through our life, and to experience what it looks like to have an unshakable kingdom, an unshakable kingdom, because that's the thing we have to understand. Every time we come into the presence of God, we're serving a king that it does not fail, does not falter, that is not shaken by culture, by the government. No, no. We serve a God that is a God of victory. Amen. A God that reigns. A God that is not moved by whatever happens. We serve an amazing God. And so because we serve an amazing God, it is also our responsibility to live this life and to share the kingdom of God with other people. To share it. Because a lot of people outside of this room need what you have, and that's Jesus. They've been searching, they've been scratching, crawling, trying to do the best that they could to get what you have. And that's Jesus. Because Jesus himself said in John 10, he said, I have come that they might have life and life in abundance. When Jesus came, he didn't come so that you could come and live a life full of failure, of depression, of defeat. No, no, Jesus said, I come to give you life. Life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give you life. That's what the kingdom of, the kingdom of God is wherever God reigns. That's the kingdom of God. Wherever he reigns, that is the kingdom of God. And so if God reigns in your life, then you are receiving the kingdom of God. And you are allowing other people to see the kingdom of God through you. Because the kingdom of God operates different than any other kingdom. The kingdom of God does not fail. And the kingdom of God does not falter. The kingdom of God does not lose its its influence. No, the kingdom of God is consistent every single day. And that is the kingdom of God. And that's why we're so adamant that you receive and you understand what it is to receive an unshakable kingdom, like the book of Hebrews says. That we are receiving an unshakable kingdom. A powerful kingdom. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in several verses today. Uh, But the first one is uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Jesus is doing a prayer with the disciples because they didn't know how to pray. And they said, teach us how to pray. But he says something, he says, May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus, when he's teaching them to pray, he mentions the kingdom of God first because he wants us to understand that the kingdom of God starts from within. That the kingdom of God is going to spread when it starts from within. Within, when me and you begin to allow the kingdom of God to reign in our lives, it then spreads to others. We should want the kingdom of God to come. We should want the kingdom of God to move in our lives. We should want the kingdom of God to move in our families, in our businesses, in our schools, in our governments. A lot of you voted and you got to see the results. You should want God to move in every area of your life. That should be a desire. And so Jesus is saying, may your kingdom come. He has the expectation that, God, we want your kingdom. Whatever heaven has, we want it here on earth. Whatever God has to offer, we want it here on earth. As long as we're breathing, we want it here on earth. And so Jesus, may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words... The kingdom of God exists where God's will is carried out. The kingdom of God exists where God's will is carried out. It's carried out. Where the will of God is carried out. Where it's God leading, not me. Where it's God's the one that I'm, I'm following, I'm not following myself. You will know the difference between you building your own kingdom and building God's by who you follow. And by who might be you. By who might be your emotions, by who might be money, but you will know what kingdom you're building by who you follow. And so the question I have to ask you is, is the kingdom of God the one that's leading you? Is God the one that's leading you? Are you led by emotion? Are you led by something else? Because if so, can I tell you something? Every time we do that, that is where we find death, destruction, depression, anxiety, when things are out of God's will. When me and you begin to build our own kingdoms, because every time we build our own kingdoms, can, can we be honest, it never really lasts. 
Every time people want to build something else, it, it never lasts because that's not the way we were designed. We were designed to follow God. We were designed to honor God, to be submitted unto God. And that is where the blessing is. That's where the, that is where we find the blessings and the healings and the prosperity that God offers when we are following the kingdom of God. Amen. And so I want to be like that. So how do, we, how do we ask the kingdom to come? How do we, it's not just simply God, when your kingdom come, how do we live that out? The first thing that Jesus did is simple. He said, Lord, may your kingdom, he called the kingdom down. He said, may your kingdom come. He was passionate about the kingdom of God coming into his world. And the question I have to ask you, are you passionate enough for God to come into your world? Are you passionate enough to say, God, may your kingdom come into my world, into my business, into my household, into my school? Are you passionate that the kingdom of God would come to your life, to your world? Jesus said to seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. But he said, seek the kingdom first. Seek God first. First, call unto God first. Because if we're not careful, if we're not passionate enough for God to come into our world, what happens is we have misplaced passion, which then results in misplaced purpose. We will have a misplaced passion. When we have misplaced passion, we become passionate about the wrong things. And when we become passionate about the wrong things, we get the wrong results. And so we're asking God, would you come? May your kingdom come. May your will be done. Would you come, God, into my situation? God, would you, remember I said the kingdom of God is wherever God reigns. God, would you reign in my mind? God, would you reign in my finances? God, would you reign in my school, in my faith? God, would you reign? And that is what God is asking us to do. Jesus gave us an example, may your kingdom come. And when we do that, church, can I tell you something? When we learn to seek God first, we will never be last. When you put God first, you will never be last. I had a couple that texted me a couple of weeks ago. We, I know it feels like I haven't seen you in a long time. So give me some time. Let's just, let us get used to each other again. All right. But I had a couple text me about this testimony. We've been having testimonies after testimonies. And this couple um, that I know very well, they were going through, through some financial issues. But they told me, this the couple told me that they, Tech, they, they, when they were texting me that they were t- faithful in their tithing, but they were needing to sell a car. And while they, they couldn't sell the car, they would put it in certain places and people would inquire about it. But nobody would, it's kind of like a fish, they wouldn't take the bait. And um, <clears throat> they were saying that finally, you know, business was getting very slow for them. And they needed the money because they had some things to pay off. Well, they said that after one of the English services a couple of weeks ago, maybe like two weeks ago, that they decided to put their faith in God. And they trusted God. And they said, God, we're going to believe that you're going to give us what we need. Well, that very day, they found someone that was interested in the car. And when they get to meet that person, that person says, okay, I'll take the car. And they were like, well, you don't want to try, try it out, you know, so you don't know, so you don't think we're scammers, you know. You don't want to try, and they're like, no, no, no. You, the, the, you, the guy said it best. He goes, that the guy said, no, you, you guys have some good vibes. I always think it's funny when someone has good vibes. I don't know why. It sounds hippie to me. Like, that you guys got some good vibes. And so the man's like, I don't need to try it. And so the man buys their car, and they have the money to pay off what they needed. I don't know about you, but that should excite you and put some faith in you. That when you put your faith in God, God will bless your life. That when you put seek the kingdom of God first, everything shall be added unto you. If you're lacking today, God wants to fill it, but put him first. I'm telling you, God wants to bless you. I'm telling you, this is not a game. This is not a thing that we, we want to preach to you so you can feel encouraged and make you feel good. No, no, this is a life to live. And Jesus said, may your kingdom come. May your kingdom come. Church, God is willing and able to come when we ask. And we, here's the thing. God will only come through invitation. God will not force himself on you. God will not put a gun to your head. No, 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 no. The difference between other religions and us is that God will only come through invitation. 
And so the only thing you have to do is ask, God, would you come? God, would you come and reign in this problem? God, would you come and reign in my marriage? God, would you come and, and reign over my kids? God, would you come? May your kingdom come. And we got to get, church, we have to get to a place, church, where it starts from within. It has to come from the inside. It says, God, would you come? Because if it doesn't come from us, it'll never happen. If it doesn't come from within, it will never happen. And before you know it, we don't get passionate about it anymore. And we put our passions in other things. And we put our passions in other things. We find other results. And Jesus said, would your kingdom come? Father, would you come? Father, would you come into this place? That's why when we come, and if you were here for our last prayer, we're, we're asking the Lord to move on our behalf. We're coming with expectation for God to do something new. With a holy expectation. But it starts with us inviting first. It's kind of like me. I can't go to your house unless you invite me. If I go to your house without invitation, you're probably either going to shoot me or call the cops. One or the other. And everyone's going to hear it because it's not firecrackers. But you invite. In the same thing with God. God says, I'll come by your invitation. I'll move into this situation that you're dealing with by your invitation. You're feeling doubtful. You're feeling unclear about what, what's your next steps. I'll come and give you the peace and the clarity by invitation. Not by you trying to do everything in your hands, by your ways, by your thoughts, by your knowledge. No, no, but if you fully trust me, God says, that is where the blessing comes. That is where the transformation happens. And we ask God, would you come first? The kingdom of God, may your kingdom come first. Second thing is this. If we're asking the God for the kingdom of God to come in our lives and through our lives and live from within, and if we're going to spread this out because the kingdom of God is not meant to just stay with one person, it's meant to be for the world. Then we have to live like, kingdom people, like the way kingdom people should live because the way we operate is differently. I don't operate by what's trending I don't operate by what's popular. I operate by what the Word of God tells me. And because what the Word of God tells me gives me life. and gives me something much more. If you have your Bibles, this is a perfect example of what it looks like to come into the presence of God and for the kingdom. I want you to go to uh, uh, Mark chapter 10, 13 through 16. Mark 10, 13 through 16. says this, it says, One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and has placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. One more time, I'm going to read it again. Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter enter it like a child will never enter it church if the kingdom of god reigns in your life that the kingdom is within you the bible says that jesus was praying for these kids and the, the disciples were bothered they're like hey leave him alone and jesus said no, no no that is exactly how i want people to be like a child not acting like a child not talking like a child. No, no like a child and this is what he meant he meant because when we're when we have when we were children we, we had no fear for anything. We could jump over things because we thought we were Superman. We thought that our, our dad would tell us that he was Superman. We would tell our friends that our dad was Superman. He wasn't. He didn't have the six-pack or anything. He had something else. It was there behind everything else. But we, 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 we believed everything they told us. 
I remember I'll never forget my dad used to tell me, and, I, I, and, I, and I'm mad. I think about it now, and I'm like, I can't believe this. My dad used to tell me, because I grew up in the 90s, so I'm a Jordan fan. And my dad used to tell me that, uh, hey, you know, I'm the agent for Michael Jordan. And I used to tell all my friends, hey, man, my dad knows Michael Jordan. And they're like, what, really? He's like, yeah. And I would make up stories like, yeah, he's not going to pick me up today because he has to be in Chicago for. I would, because I believed him. Because he was my dad. And my dad was, to me, was everything. And so if my dad said, you know, whatever, I was going to believe it. But there's something about being a kid that it's so innocent because you're like, man, you trust in your parents. You trust in the people that you look, to, look up to and whatever they say. You're like, yes, we're going to do it. Or, yeah, that's, that's true. And you believe it. And Jesus is the same way. He's saying, I'm your father. Would you come to me like a child? Trust what I'm saying so that you could see what I'm going to do. He says, I want people to come like a child to me with no reservations, no, no, no reservations, no ideology, no, like, man, stubbornness or, or, or whatever mindset other people have put in you. No, he says, I want you to come to me like a child that is innocent and ready to receive. He says, those type of people will enter the kingdom of God when they come to me like a child. That's why there's some, that's why I have to understand, church, when we want to see the blessings and the miracles in our life, we have to look at it like a child that God can do anything because he can. When we used to believe that our parents could do anything, how much more God that created our parents and created me and you. Church, God can do anything. He did it for this couple and he'll do it for you. But it requires us to come to him like a child. And to live based off of what his word says. Like I told you, I went off of the word of my father that he was Michael Jordan's agent. And I told all my friends. And now I look, I feel dumb, but it is what it is. Thank God it was in the 90s, right? No social media or anything. So, sometimes I want to go back to those days. But, it is going off of the word. The Bible says this. I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 46 really quick. I'm talking about the word of God. Deuteronomy 32, 46 says this. It says, he added, take heart all the words of warning I have given you today. Pass them on as they command to your children so that they will obey every word of these instructions. One more time. I saw some of you going through your Bible. Take heart, take to heart all the words of warning I have given you today. Pass them on as a command to your children so that they will obey every word of these instructions. Why do I bring that up? Because if we're going to receive the kingdom of God like children, then we have to stand by his word. Bible says that Joshua chapter 1, when Joshua was about to lead the people into the promised land, Moses had died. You know what one of the things that God told him, Joshua? He said, meditate on my word. And he said, not only that, meditate and obey my word so then you will prosper. So that you would prosper. In other words, if you meditate on my word, if you listen to my word, if you follow my word, you will be blessed. You will be protected. You will be able to do the things that you could not do because you trusted in what I said over what man says. And if we are going to ask the kingdom of God to work from within us, then we have to allow the word to work. Some of people ask God, Pastor Sam, what is the will of God for my life? It's in the word. You want, you want to know what the will of God for you is? The word of God. What's God's will? It's in the word of God. God's will is in the word of God. God wants you to be healed. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be blessed. Come on. The word of God gives us the exact thing. Some of you, you don't have to search for the will of God. It's already in the word. You, all you got to do is simply obey and trust God. All you got to do is simply walk with God. Walk with what he's saying. Joshua the only reason why Joshua was successful in all that he did, if you read the study of life of Joshua, was because he obeyed the word of God. 
Meditating on the word of God is not just, it's, can I tell you something? Meditating on the word of God is not sitting with your legs crossed and saying, mm, that's not meditation. That's someone else's definition of meditation. Meditation is simply this, that when me and you are reading the word of God, sometimes it's just you pausing and allowing the word of God to speak to you. You're saying, God, but your kingdom come. It's you pausing for a moment and thinking about, Lord, what areas am I not allowing the kingdom of God to come? That's meditating. Meditating on the word of God is simply pausing for a moment. Whatever passage you read, this this is like practical tips. Can I be practical with you? Is that fine? So I mean, all right. Next Sunday we'll wake up a little bit more, all right? But I know it's cold. How many of y'all enjoy the cold, by the way? Anybody enjoying the cold? I was praising the Lord when I saw the weather change. I said, yes, Lord, come. Kingdom come. And, uh, but meditation is that. When he said, when the Bible says to meditate on the word of God, it's simply to take a pause and to just say, Lord, what are you trying to tell me in that moment? God, would you speak to me? Because here's the thing that we're very good at. Whenever we come to, to, to speaking to God and praying and reading the word, we're very good at talking and not listening. We will open our mouths for 10, 20 minutes to God, but never take the time to listen to what he has to say to us. And so God is asking us to meditate on his word. God is asking us to be like children. When we tell our children to be quiet because we're talking, we're wanting them to listen to what we're saying. It's the same thing with God. Would you come to him with your silence? Would you come to him with your respect, with your honor? Would you come to him in such a way that says, God, whatever you have to say and whatever you're going to tell me, I'm going to do it. I receive it. I receive what you're trying to tell me. And can I tell you, if you live your life in that way, It'll change the trajectory of what you do. It'll change the way you make decisions. It'll change the way you pray. It'll change your faith. Maybe you're in this room and you're like, Pastor, I got faith, but I don't got a lot of faith. But can I tell you something? Even the Bible says faith like a mustard seed is enough. But if you even have that, I'm telling you, something has to happen when the word of God is put to work. When the word of God is put to work, when I'm hearing God's word and I'm following with what he says, when I'm hearing God's word, I'm going to obey him without stopping, regardless of other people understand it or not. Because not everybody's going to understand why you do the things you do, but it's all, all that matters is what God says. That's all that matters. Not everybody's going to understand the decisions you're making because of what God told you to do. But it's okay because God didn't call you. I mean, man didn't call you. God did. It's okay because God's the one that's speaking to you, not man. It's not wrong to get counsel. No. We, the Bible says we need godly counsel. That means that's, that's why we go to people for help. But here's the thing. That once God sets it in your heart, it's not for you to turn back and do the opposite. Once God gives you direction... It's not for you to turn back and do the opposite, but it's to obey him and to trust him. We obey God because we trust him. And if we don't obey God, it's may, it's, have you, maybe just maybe there's a trust issue because you're wondering, God, if I do this, what if it doesn't work out? God, I'm praying this, but it's, it doesn't look like it might happen. And so when you're in this process, a lot of thoughts come to your mind. And you have to get to a place, church, like a child, once again. Living like like the kingdom is within us is us living our life with full of faith. Full of faith, full of his word, and full of action. Action means that you are following what's been told. You are living what you've believed. It doesn't matter what's happening outside. I've said it since I've been here. It doesn't matter what the government says. It doesn't matter how the elections go. I'm not even here to tell you who to vote for. Don't, don't matter to me. Because I believe, I trust that if your vote, if you, whoever you voted for, you voted for what is your conviction. You voted for what the word of God is. I trust that that's what you did. If I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. But what I am going to say is this, is that everything that we do comes from a place of obedience. 
that everything we do would come from a place of obedience. That when you are feeling a certain type of way, would you go back to the word to remind you of who God is? When you are needing direction, would you go back to the word? When you're feeling like, Pastor Sam, I don't know if I could do this every Sunday, would you go back to the word? Pastor Sam, I don't know if God really is in it. Would you go back to the word? So we're going to spread the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is going to work from the inside out. Because here's the thing. It will not work unless you work it. The kingdom of God will not spread unless you believe first. Unless you do your part first. Last thing we got to do is we got to seek God holy. We have to holy, like we have to seek him with such a surrender. That is how we spread the kingdom of God. Because if we can get the kingdom of God in here, then it's going to go out there. It's going to be in such a way that you can't contain it. You're going to have a peace that you can't contain because the kingdom of God is here. If you're lacking peace today, would you allow the presence of God to come? If you're lacking hope today, would you allow the presence of God to come? If you're needing God to bless you financially, bless your business, bless your job, or however else you live, would you ask the kingdom of God? You know why we're doing prayer nights, church? We're doing this not because it's just another thing on the schedule. No, we're, we're, going, we're, we're pressing and we're believing God to do the impossible. That's why we had prayer nights. That's why on the 28th, one more time, on the 20th, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to annoy you with this. But on the 28th, 7 p.m., we're going to be in here again and we're going to pray. If you couldn't come the last time for your X, Y, and Z reasons, I want to encourage you. Make time to come. God moved in a powerful way. We have testimonies because of that day. I, I, I was so happy, church. You don't know why? Because usually when we ask people to pray, nobody shows up. I thought maybe we're going to have like five, ten people. Six, including Pastor Alex and seven, Gabby. Because that's like a pastoral thing to do. But we had 80 people show up to pray. And I was like, Lord, okay, we can do this. And then we had, I had people saying, we should do this every Tuesday night. And I was like, really? I mean, I'm down for it, but <laughs> I just want to make sure that there's people that are down for it. But we, we do these things, church, because we're seeking God. The Bible, Bible actually says in Matthew 7, 7, it says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. He says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Can I tell you something, church? God wants to be found. God wants to be found. God is not a God that is distant. God is not a God that is hard to find. The God is not a God that, that, that is just, you know what? We have to do all, I have to do 10 jumping jacks, I have to walk on my knees from, from Mines Road all the way over here. No, 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 it has nothing to do with that. No, no, God is easy to find. He just needs you to call. He just needs you to knock. The Bible says if you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, you will receive. There are things that you're not experiencing because you're not asking. And so, I don't know, it's because maybe you feel weird about asking. Like, can I really ask God this? I used to be like that, by the way. Like, I used to be like, God, can I really ask you for this? It sounds kind of awkward. But God is saying in his word, ask me and you will receive. Ask me. And don't just stop asking me. Keep on asking me. My child was here earlier. I had to take her out. It was getting too loud. I'm still trying to figure out this thing. Have mercy on me. Kingdom come, right? But that was seven years of asking the Lord to give me my daughter. And it's very easy, church, to give up after year three. It's very easy, church, to give up 
when the doctors are telling you that maybe this just maybe you might have to look for another solution. But it required us to seek and it required us to knock. And we got to receive what we were asking for. And I share it with this with you. I'm going to keep sharing it to the day I die. Because I need you to understand, church, that if you would ask God, you would receive it. No matter how far-fetched it seems or how awkward it seems, like, God, are you sure? Or, Pastor, am I sure I can ask for this? Yes, ask God. If you have the right motives, ask God. Ask him. Because he wants to give you. He wants to be found, the Bible says. Then the door, the Bible says, and the door will be open to you. The door will be open. Church, when we spend more, when we spend time seeking God, we'll spend less time seeking other things. When we spend more time seeking Him, we'll spend less time seeking other things. We find here's funny. Think about it. When you and you get into a habit of not seeking God like we used to, we start seeking other things, and then we got we start feeling a certain way. And it's not because God is not there, it's because we stop seeking. The kingdom of God is to be found, church. Jesus said, may your kingdom come. May your kingdom come. And then he said, would you come to, like children, would you receive the kingdom of God like a child? No pretense, no no reservations, no history. No, 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 no. Would you come with with a blank slate? A blank canvas. Would you come to God differently? So that you can experience the blessings and a touch from heaven like never before. The Bible says that he gives the kids and he blesses them. Same thing with us. When we come to him like children, he comes to us and he blesses us. Church, the, to receive an unshakable kingdom is not difficult, but it does require response. It requires me and you're responding, God, I, I'm responding to you so that I can get what you have for me. The Bible says this in Psalms 107, 9. It says, for he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things. For he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things. Church, where there is no thirst, there is no fill. We got to come and receive and seek the Lord with a place like that, God, where, Lord, you're the one person that satisfies me. Lord, your presence is what satisfies me. Your word, that's what satisfies me. I can get everything else. I can get the car. I can get the house. I can get X, Y, and Z, but it's you, God, that satisfies me. Everything else is just a bonus. Everything else is an add-on. It's seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you, Matthew 6, Everything, not some things, everything shall be added unto you, but seek the kingdom first and his righteousness. People miss that part, and his righteousness. And then everything shall be added. Thank you so much for joining our service and for listening to us. We are located at 4519 East Del Mar Boulevard in Laredo, Texas. And we hope that you continue to be a part of our ICM family.